I grew up in Togo, West Africa. It is a small country on the west coast of Africa with problems as big as the continent. It is in Togo that I learned to appreciate food. Nights and days going hungry will do that to a child. As a child, I never understood just how much of a role food played in our lives. But I always knew it was something vital, something to cherish, something to share, something to never waste. All that changed when I moved to the United States. When you have experienced hunger and seen famine, fast food and grocery stores look like heaven. For a while in the U.S., I lived like Americans lived, eating a lot, wasting a lot, without care or responsibility. We've all been there. What do you do when there is always food, when there is so much of it? The astonishing fact is that I never understood that my actions as an American actually contributed to the nutritional challenges my siblings and I faced as children of a third world country. Today I know better. The cheap and excessive nutritional demands of the richest and most developed countries in the world has been linked to the economic challenges of third world countries and their inability to feed themselves. The rate at which food is produced and the methods used to do so directly contribute to global warming and health challenges that cost the world economy billions of dollars every year. Sometime last year, I asked myself the question that would become the driving force for this project. Where does our food come from? And will we always have this much of it? The answer, of course, after days of research, was no. When you live in a rich country, it is easy to assume there will always be food. But food is a natural resource. And just like every other natural resource, it has an expiration date when abused. The culprit, I will later find out, is our addition to meat. In a 2006 report, the UN Food and Agricultural Organization concluded that worldwide livestock farming generates 18% of the planet's greenhouse gas emissions. By comparison, all the world's cars, trains, planes, and boats account for a combined 13% of greenhouse gas emissions. Much of livestock's contribution to global warming comes from deforestation. As the growing demand for meat results in trees being cut down to make space for pasture or farmland to grow animal feed. Livestock takes up a lot of space, nearly one third of the Earth's entire land mass. In Latin America, for instance, the FAO estimates that some 70% of former forest cover has been converted for grazing. Lost forest cover heats up the planet because trees absorb CO2 while they are alive. And when they are burned or cut down, the greenhouse gas is released back into the atmosphere. Then there is manure. All that animal waste generates nitrous oxide a greenhouse gas that has 296 times the warming effect of CO2. And of course, there is cow flatulence. As cattle digest grass or grain, they produce methane gas, of which they expel up to 200 liters a day. Given that there are 100 million cattle in the US alone, and that methane has 23 times the warming impact of CO2, the gas adds up. 
Right now, there are 7 billion people on the planet. In 2050, there will be 9 billion people on the planet. Food production will be in crisis. The UN claims that food production must double by 2050 to meet the demand of the world's growing population. The worrisome news is that as the world economy grows, so does global meat consumption. The average person in the industrialized world eats more than 170 pounds of meat annually, compared with around 66 pounds consumed by the average citizen of the developing world. However, as developing nations get richer, one of the first things citizens spend their extra income on is a more meat-rich diet. Whereas pork would have once been a rare luxury in China, today even the relatively poor in the country's cities can afford a little meat at almost every meal. So much so that pork imports to China rose more than 900% through the first four months of the year. In 2008, global meat production was expected to tap 280 million tons. It did. And that figure could nearly double by 2050. However, most of the world's productive farmland is already in use. So increased food production will require extending intensive farming methods with greater use of pesticides and fertilizers, leading to the increased release of greenhouse gases. The reality is we cannot double food production without causing further damage to the planet and to our lives. As a designer and as someone who has experienced hunger, I felt it was my responsibility to find a solution or at least try to find one. However, this project is not just about me. It is about all of us, the privileged few, the quote-unquote lucky ones, the ones who have it all and understand that with privilege comes great responsibility. It is about the changes we have to make in our lives, the changes we need to make in our lives to ensure our survival and the survival of our planet.